June 11th, 1995. Monsvan Hospital is abandoned by medical staff, leaving patients inside. Doctors and nurses are in shock, unable to speak or remember what happened. They're in shock about their own dereliction of duty. All right. Um, after four hours from the event, police evacuated patients and staff remaining in the facility. You just said they all left. I do wish you'd make up your mind. All evacuated persons exhibited the same symptoms of amnesia and shock. Oh, all right then. So presumably they've been hit over the back of the head with something. Possibly a large fish. Um... Lucia Grint and Thomas Gillen are still missing. The police have not found any trace. An agent is sent from the facility to search for them. The facility? You may sound like SCP. I don't think it's anything quite as, um, as secret as any of that. Indeed. The sinless. I was going to say that was a nice menu, but then again, I just remembered the VHS tapes didn't have menus. Those were things that came with DVDs. So, um, right. Here we are in a... Oh, gosh. I've heard of head bob before, but this is a no. You turn your head like this. But what's going on over there? <laughs> I've never seen that before. And I'm kind of in love with it. Right then, man alive, this is a VHS filter and a half, isn't it? This is going to make the uh, file size... File size more girthy than... Well, a horse. Right then. <laughs> man alive, this camera is... It, it takes a bit of getting used to. Um, looks like we live in a nice neighbourhood, though. Although we probably don't live here, do we? This is probably some sort of... Um, office, judging by the desks. What do we have here? A tape? Your from the Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman with trapping. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Sounds like Ronald Reagan reading a very cross section of the Bible. And when I say cross section, I don't mean in the data analysis sense, I mean in the um I mean in the irate sense. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I've got no idea what this game is. Other than knowing it's about that it has its sort of found footage look to it, I, I, I don't know anything. Not a thing. Only that there's no mirrors in this place, implying that everyone here was very ugly. Maybe that's why they were all in shock. Ah, oh, I get it now. There were mirrors everywhere, and everyone that worked here, and everyone that was a patient here, was very ugly bugly. They saw themselves in the bathroom mirror, and they were so shocked that they fell over and cracked their head on the back of the, um, toilet cubicle. When this happened, they lost their memory, which was good, because otherwise they might have remembered that they were very ugly bugly. Right then, let's see what we can find in here. A place where you store things, many things, giddy on, enough drugs to put down the entire Ascot race horse team, and, um... <laughs> and enough gas to actually make Ascot races bearable. And, um, some very, very uncomfortable looking beds. Good. Okay. I don't know why I decided to rip off uh, Ascot races there quite so much, given I've never been, but never mind. Oh, this is a restricted area. Indeed, it is. It's so restricted, even the light can't get in there. Goodness. Can I go into the elevator? It wouldn't seem so, no. All right then. I was gonna say, where am I going? Um, I don't, I don't know where I've gone. I've gone somewhere, goodness only knows where. Have I, um, or maybe I went up the stairs and I like climbed up. Hmm, that's interesting. I was saying uh, yesterday, I think. I don't know why I took the time to figure out when I said that, given that it was in a different recording, which means it could have been like a month ago, or a year ago, or you may have never even heard it. Um, but I said that um, jump cuts were nice, because it meant that you didn't have to deal with uh, long boring bits, but I never got to enjoy them, of course, because, um, you know, that's how things work. But um, it almost seems as if I did get to enjoy a jump cut then, because um, 
the game decided, uh, I'm clearly moving too slowly, let's speed this up a little bit and booted me off to the next place. That's nice. Here's a crib. And I don't just mean the home of a chav. I mean the home of a wee baby, which may one day become a chav, which is a rather terrifying concept. Well, it's weird, isn't it, when babies are newly born. They, um, they could turn into anything. From a serial killer to a serial correlation expert, there really is no way to know. Right, let's have another uh, listen from... Uh, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Okay, when I said it sounded like a passage from the Bible, I was sort of joking. Because, um, you know, I heard some sort of fuzz being stuck on the end, like, um, cometh and goeth and all that sort of jazz. But uh, it actually does seem to be one. That one's a bit better defined. I could understand much more of the words than uh, than I could the first time. So uh, possibly worth thinking about some sort of culty, cultiness, perhaps. Some people, um, some people with some sort of religious proclivity, have um, have been getting up to mischief here. Well, that seems a bit of a uh, a trend, doesn't it, with hospitals and stuff, and crucifixes, crucifixes, not quite large enough for a human being, but about the right size for a sort of four-year-old child. Oh, wonderful. Oh, and there's somebody on the other side of it. Excellent. Absolutely marvellous. I really hope it's not a four-year-old child. You'd think someone would have noticed. You'd think if there was something going on here, and there was a mass exodus of staff, and goodness knows hospitals imply a lot of them, you'd think someone would have noticed when they ran out like uh, rats out of a burning building. Right, never mind any of them. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a trend with sort of cults and hospitals. Or uh, sanitariums, I guess because they think there's like loads of people in there who are either um, very stressed and overworked, which means they might like the idea of a, um, a story about some sort of paradisical... Paradisical? Paradisey. I'm not sure what the correct uh, the correct word exactly is there. Um, yeah, they might be easy to sway. I think, you know, an overworked doctor might like the idea of knowing there's something better on the other side. Or there might just be loads of um, ill people that we can murder. Right. Oh, I don't think it is a real person. I think it's a uh, it's just a sculpture. It's not an actual body. Okay, that's, that's, that's slightly less concerning. What's well, slightly more concerning is that little bit of singing I can hear. Oh, you're singing a, a lullaby, are you? That's nice. What is this? Uh? Per transit? Per transit? Per, per transit? Per, oh, it's Latin. Duh. You're talking about a cult field. They're hardly going to be speaking Queen's English, are they? Right. Good evening, madam. How are you? I don't know, but she's gone. In fact, I'm grateful. We've possibly gone up to another level. In both senses of the term. New level of the game and new level of the hospital. Alright then. Keep to that. What, um... What else can we find? What looks like a dentist's chair. For a very strangely shaped person who has presumably horribly broken their back. Maybe their bum is supposed to go in that bit, and they've just got really long calves. Perhaps that's the um, the situation. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon the his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Are you quite finished? 
So let me get this straight. A um a lion and a bear I'm pointing roughly at my feet now. Loved each other very much. And then nine months later something popped out. Um but it turned out it had actually been a three way and some sort of um whatever the name of the dinosaur with spikes down its back appeared. Um, and a little bit later, it didn't brush its teeth, and it had too much candy, and it had to go to the dentist, and it had to get ten crowns. Right. I'm not quite sure what that bears, um, relation to, in terms of everything else. Um, in fact, I have no idea what that bears relation to. But, honestly, who cares? Let's, um... Let's just pretend like we know what we're, what what's going on. And, um... And continue. Shall we? <laughs> this game is a little mysterious, but I rather like it. Um, I like a game that's a bit mysterious with this story, rather than just immediately falling into a um, a predetermined stereotype. Hello, friend. How are you? You seem very naked, and also very dead. I I might hasten to add, which I think is um. Possibly a good thing because then you don't have to live with the indignity of having been um, a spy in the nude without any, uh, but by a stranger, even. I get my sentence the right way around. Alright then. What next exactly? Between. <laughs> well, that's what next. That's what's next, apparently. Is it over? My, if I, if I died a bit. I uh, can't move. It seems like the camera's been dropped on the floor. I was wondering if, um, if it was going to get picked up again. It's always a nice feature in a, in a sort of a footage game like this, because you never quite know who's picked it up. Again, whether it was the same person who was playing as before, or whether it was this person. What is it with naked people in horror games recently? Right, enough of all that, I think. Enough of all of that for the rest of forever and always, because frankly I think I've had enough. Um, I... What am I doing here again? Oh yeah, I've been sent by the facility, whatever the hell that is, to do some sort of job, whatever the hell that is. Oh, gosh. All right. So there's nothing here, so then presumably I must, um, I must go back through that door I came through originally. Well, that would make sense, because that wouldn't mean that I would see him, and I would get the spook of seeing him. Um, but at the same time, it's a little confusing about where I'm supposed to go next. And where my dead friend went. And I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they that worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Right. I'll tell you a good way of figuring out whether a bit of text comes from a sort of religious text like that is if it's amazingly vague and confusing and seems to take forever to say anything. Because um, I think we could pretty much summarise that as person was injured, person was no longer injured. People spoke about person who used to be injured but was no longer injured. I think that's basically the long and the short of it. But it always seems to take so very long to say anything. Which is a bit weird, but never mind. This elevator doesn't seem very safe, but never mind. Who needs safety in a hospital? I mean, to be honest, if there's any way you should be injured, it's a hospital, because you are right next to all of the places that will fix you up again. So, um, maybe there are worse places to get in. Can I turn the light back on? Well, I can press F for all the good it does. Goodness sake. More of people in this state. Hello. How are you? What do you have on your faces? Oh, you have those, um, crucifixes, which that, uh, 
That corpse had. Uh, right. All right then. Um, and here's another one. One that seems to have a few more curves than the last one did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, I'm guessing this is a morgue. This seems like the edge of one of those um, places where they put people down when they do the emboweling. So um, let's have a wee listen to this. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue up forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme a thing in his tabernacle and then to dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given unto him all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So this person was declared as needed to go to war with the saints. Well, I think if those historically in inaccurately hatted gentlemen, those um, those abbey pillagers of old, taught us anything, it's that making war with the saints is usually a short affair. So he'll probably be back soon, and we can hear another little documentation of his adventures later, which sounds nice. Right then, should we um? Should we go through here as well and hopefully find people who've got slightly more attire on than um, than previously? Except it's a shower room, so possibly not. Um, it's very dark. I wish I had a light working. Also, wish I wasn't hiccuping all over the show. That'd be lovely. Um, oh, I didn't realise I could open these. I didn't realise I could open these either. I'm not sure why I want to open them, but that seems to be a thing that I can do. Yeah, I can do it to that one as well. It could be so dark. It's so, so dark. I just want the light. Oh, they've moved. They opened the door and moved. Evening, gentlemen, or possibly madams. I don't know, and I don't want to look too closely to figure out how in case I get booted off the site. <laughs> can I go through here? No. No, I can't. What are you holding? I'm not sure. It's like a load of candles and like a load of wax. But it's all kind of fused together. Ugh. That's all a bit worrying, isn't it? Right. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, madams. Right. Oh, good. People on their knees and people in lesser states of dress. Oh, dear. I have a bad feeling this video isn't going to be particularly publishable. Oh, and horny people as well. Oh, dear. Hello, little person. I don't like my nurse. Can I have a different one, please? I guess it's the night shift and all of the cute ones are having their beauty sleep at the minute. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Is that quite it? Now that the castle of, um, the castle of, would you get your buttocks out of the way, please? I can't even tell if you're wearing trousers. I sincerely hope that you are, but somehow I doubt that you are. Um, now that the castle of horns and ripliness has been erected, um, is that quite finished? Why is this swinging so much? Or has it been attached to? I dread to think. Oh, that's it. Okay, right. That was weird and mysterious, but um, I rather enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, very nice environment, very dirty and grungy. Um, I liked the um, I liked the head bob. It was weird. Well, I say head bob wasn't really head bob, was it? It was more like the way the camera moved. Very uh, sort of creative and inventive, and I feel like a bit of work went into that, which is nice. It's always nice to see a bit of effort going into these things. Um, I liked the environment. It was really nice and grungy and dirty. 
and the uh, the lighting was good as well in the sense that it was dark but not so dark you couldn't see what you were doing but also not so bright that it wasn't spooky and it had some nice spooky character models in it and a nice little bit of sound design so um yes that was the sinless which presumably references the little baby which they were sacrificing um being the innocent so that's all a bit sad and horrible um but then again we are here to play indie horror games not literal games about bunny rabbits going for a little adventure in the grass so um honestly what did you expect anyway i think that's enough of that Not get my ass in a comfortable position. Right. All this looks perfectly straightforward. Oh goodness! Painted the name of the game on the wall. Oh, is this a menu? Oh, I love menus like this. I love it when they do menus like this. Um, I would like to play the game, please. Right then. I have been tasked with retrieving the granddaughter of Mrs. Hemmington. I have been told the girl is in her late twenties, but due to mental illness, she has the mind of a child. She is believed to have returned to Hawthorne Sanitarium, where she was once a patient. I will search the asylum for the girl, and return her safely. Goodness. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a game called Life After Us The System, I think. Life After Us being the name of a little series, I think, of short horror games. Um, and they're all based around H.P. Uh, Lovecraft and Poe and all that sort of various jazz. Such jazzy fellows as they were. I made a new friend today, Dr. Tar. He says I'm very pretty. He kept touching my hair. He must really like it. I don't like Dr. Tar. I really, really don't like the sound of Dr. Tar. Anyway, I also don't like this fly, but never mind. Um, yes, apparently this game, the system, is the second game in the um, in the Life After Us series. The only problem is, is I can't find the first one. There is another game made by this developer um, called goodness, what was it called? Um, Keep them below, I think, which. Um, was made before this one, but I don't know that uh, it's actually in, in, in the series. Mr. Teddy should be here. I don't like it here. A mean woman took Mr. Teddy away. She said I'm too old for silly things like toys. He is not a toy. He is my best friend. I can't sleep without Mr. Teddy. I wish someone would bring him back. I need him next to my bed. Man alive. You work in a, um... Journal entry. Find Mr. Teddy. Can I read my journal in some form or another? I don't know. I can press tab to do that, but other than that, not a great deal seems to do anything. You work in a um, mental health clinic, and you um, you take away the things that people need to make them feel safe. Excellent work. I mean, if this is being referred to as a sanitarium, it's probably back in the old days when uh, these things were a little, bit, a little more than prisons. Mr. Teddy, I have rescued you. I'm going to take you back to where you belong. Dr. Tar told me to meet him in his office and said not to tell anyone. Sorry, I just read the next sentence. It felt slightly sick in my stomach. It's just a general word of advice. If anyone says do X and don't tell Y, run the opposite direction. Oh, dear. I can't even read that. I can't even express those words in my own voice. It's just... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Human horrors, eh? They will always be scarier than demons and monsters. I didn't get time to read that. I blacked out, and upon waking up, I found myself still in the asylum. But something is wrong. The darkness surrounds me, and I feel as if I am not alone. I must find the girl as soon as I can. I think the uh, second bit of writing on the wall said something about touching hair again. Goodness, I can't even tell what it is, and I already don't like it. I see it's got a hell of a lot darker in here. What does this say? Dr. Dart, Dr. Tart told me I'm very pretty and that I'm not a girl. He said little girls don't look as pretty as I do. He says I'm a woman. Yeah, 
But what their body is doesn't really matter, does it? It's what their mind is, because it's the mind that consents, not the body. But, you know, or more pertinently, doesn't consent in these sorts of situations. But, um, can we look at this? Because this is probably slightly less horrific. Honestly, can't tell what it is. It looks like a campfire with massive dragonflies flying around it. With some sort of wooden crossing structure built above it with a big egg on top. Good. Making boiled eggs for the dragonfly people to eat. That's far more pleasant than everything else around here. Right, then, kitty aunt. It's very grungy and filthy, this environment, isn't it? Which I feel like is what a sanitarium really would have been. Uh, I feel like hygiene wasn't very high up on the list of demands uh, back in those days. Right, then. So, presumably, we are now in a different part of the uh, asylum. Uh, I don't know about Dr. Tal's tastes, but my taste is for people with their heads still attached. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is, um. This is all a bit real, isn't it? And I suppose that's the thing. At the end of the day, one needn't really be too scared of demons and. and werewolves and vampires and cheese monsters because in the end oh I comprende um, in the end when you're lying there in bed at night and it's dark and it's quiet and it's cold well it's not cold now because it's the middle of August but you know what I mean you're not actually going to um, get visited by a demon or a, or, a, or, a, or a werewolf or a vampire. The horrifying thing is there are people that get visited by monsters like Dr. Tar. And perhaps that's what makes it all worse. The fact that it's real. Can I go through here? No. That's a shame because that would allow me to get slightly further away from this horrific place that I currently inhabit. Alright, I think what I need to do is to find the head of, I don't know if it's a person, I don't know if it's a mannequin, I don't know exactly what it is, but um, is this where I entered? I feel like that's the door I entered, because that's where we had these paintings of these strange looking people. Um, I think I need to find the head and return it to that room. Good afternoon, I barely saw you there. So this is where, yeah, this is where we return Mr. Teddy, but someone's come along and scrubbed the walls clean. Which, um, on the one hand I approve of, and on the other hand I, I don't think this is, uh, the time. She says my head is so small. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Can we, um, <laughs> good, 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 good afternoon, good I see, ah, oh, uh, uh, hello, another inhabitant. I was about to open my big stupid mouth and say, can we just have like a zombie or something? Can we just go back to basics? Can we leave this subject matter far enough behind? But, um... But I should be careful what I wish for, it seems. I don't know where that man has gone. I don't particularly care to find out where he's gone, either. I doubt I'll be able to get through any of these doors. No. Seems like these are doors which are inaccessible to me. Well, there's no one in here. That makes me happy. There's a piece of paper, however, which doesn't... Oh, gosh. How does it keep getting worse? How does it keep managing to get worse every time I read one of these notes? Okay, I can turn that off. Good, that might help me become more stealthy. Is that the head? I can't tell what that is. It looks like a skull. It is a skull. It's a skull with some hair on it. Curious. It's always the uh, sign of a good writer who can take something um, bad and constantly make it worse with every f additional sentence. I don't mean bad in the sense of poor quality, I mean, you know, just... You know what I mean. Right. It's interesting, because now I'm not just 
disturbed because of the subject material. I'm also disturbed because of that man that just wandered out of nowhere and then suddenly seemed to wander straight back into nowhere. Oh, gosh. Oh. That's... kind of you? I suppose? <laughs> Once more I awake in this place, and that can only be hell on earth. There is something holding me here. It will not let me leave. Something much worse is looking for me. I must find the girl and escape this hell. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I can't if I come up with my usual retort about saying we should just catapult ourselves out of a window. Because there aren't any windows. Because the lack of sunlight is a really, uh, really healthy thing to give people that are sick, isn't it? Alright. Um. Goodness, I don't know where we're going. I don't know what we're looking for. I presume we're still looking for this little girl, but, um. Oh, you're still here. That's nice. I was wondering why the head is well, is so very uh, disproportionate to the rest of the body, but I wonder whether that's referencing, tying in rather, with the other note that we saw about um, it saying the head was very small. I don't know whether that's some sort of reference to that or, uh, or link to it, or whether it is just some form of a scaling issue. It's difficult to tell in an indie horror game whether something is uh, a bug or a feature, shall we say. That door wasn't open before. Oh gosh. I'll turn that off for the sake of being vaguely more stealthy. Is that another headless mannequin? I read one of these things I think how can this get any worse and then every time I read the next one it somehow gets worse my word this is uh, genuinely very very impressively disturbing I can't tell whether I love this or I hate it I think it's a bit of both to be honest oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. just tell me I'm not wander wandering towards the crematorium Tell me that's not the box that I think it is. I don't know. I can't see inside it, and for that I will be forever grateful. Really? I hated him about two sentences after I heard his name. I'm glad to know we're in... We are in very strong agreement. I'm at a bit of a loss for words, to be honest with you. I'm honestly not entirely sure what I should... Oh, um, no, not you again. Giddy out, excuse me, sir. I didn't mean to interrupt whatever it was you were doing. I'm sure it was lovely and pleasant, because everything that goes on in this bloody building is lovely and pleasant, isn't it? Oh, dear. Yes, I feel like any comments I could make or any statements I could give would be utterly superfluous. Uh, it's odd, really. I, I, I like to think of myself as a relatively hardened character. You know, I... <laughs> With the exceptions of things like spiders, there's not a lot that genuinely gets to me. But, uh... I have to confess, this kind of thing does. And it's strange, because it's always a bizarre mix of feelings. It's a mix of of being disturbed, being angry, and being frightened all at once, which is odd. It's a very strange combination of, of emotions to be feeling, and I never quite know how to respond, because when one feels angry, one wants to fight. When one feels disturbed, one wants to leave, and when one feels frightened, when one wants to hide. <laughs> Excuse me. I need to get past you. Ow. My 
jaw. Do you mind biting me off like I'm a roast chicken? Um. Oh, good. I've worked myself straight back to where I was before. Um, at least my health regenerates, which is a, a, a small, a small mercy. Um. Yes. So it sort of fills me full of conflicting feelings about what exactly I should be doing. I was wondering whether I needed to maybe find the child and bring it back to her, much like I did with her skull. But uh, I'm not convinced that is the solution. Unless I can find the uh, that other room again. Leave me alone, man! Leave me alone! Thank you. I can't. Oh, I can. Oh, I can. I can. I um I don't know whether I should learn to trust myself for figuring that out or learn to hate myself for actually having the right answer. Oh uh, dear, oh dear, do you want me to put it in the box? Yes, you do. Hang on, why am I doing, why am I contributing to this? Now I understand the horror this young girl went through while she was here, such pain and suffering. Uh, why would she come back? Maybe because she was looking for Dr. Tarsh to smash his skull into the floor. Because if she ain't done it, I might do it myself. Right. Here we are again. Kitty, please let, uh... Please let this nearly be over. Um... I was about to say, I wonder if this story will end in Tar murdering her. And the dark thing is, that would be one of the uh, lesser of his crimes. At least in my opinion. But what do I know? I, oh, he despawns, does he? Oh, that's nice. That makes my life easier. I do quite like the addition of that uh, character because it adds a bit of sort of gameplay to this. Otherwise, it would end up being a bit of a walking simulator. So uh, I approve of the fact that it adds a degree of um, sort of interaction with the game. He told me my grandmother died today. He said she fell down the stairs and broke her neck. He said it with a smile. I know he did it. He said no one will ever come for me now. He says he's going to lock me away in a dark room. Or I'll be no trouble for him ever again. Oh, Kitty, oh, no, no, no. Oh, Kitty, I now locked myself in a blasted dead end. Is that Dr. Tar? Strange, strange outfit that he's wearing. I. <laughs> Kitty, I'm very, very grateful for the despawning. I just saved my bacon. <laughs> Is this. Yep, this is the room. Oh, hello. I haven't seen that character model in a few months. Um. Um. Good afternoon. That's the end. Well, thank goodness for that. I'm not sure I could have handled very much more of that. Um. I like this. Were there any controls I was missing? Um, so I'm not actually doing anything. I didn't know you could crouch. That's interesting. I'm not convinced it would have helped you at all. There aren't any other doors you can go through, are there? I don't think so. No. It'd be fun if you could, like, click on that door and that would let you quit the game, but, um... Well, that was a hell of a thing, wasn't it? Giddy, aren't. That was a, um... I feel like the ending let it down a little bit. I suppose because the majority of the horror in the game came from the story that it was telling rather than the sights that it gave you and the um, the anything else. But um, yes, I feel like the ending was a little bit of a letdown there with the uh, with the jump scare and all because I feel like that doesn't make a, a huge amount of sense because surely the um, the girl would be at least you know somewhat enthused towards us. I mean, comparatively, we're an absolutely lovely person compared to the bloke she's used to dealing with. So, um... 
yeah, it seems a little odd that she'd attack us, unless, of course, she, um, she's just gotten so jaded against uh, all of humanity that uh, she just kills anyone that approaches her. Which is a possibility. Right. I've got another Life After Us game to play now. I'm going to sincerely uh, hope that it is slightly less stomach churningly disturbing than that one is. So, um, I think we should leave this here before, um, before this gives me any more nightmares than it already has. So thank you very much for joining me this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps I should say sorry, sorry for joining me. Perhaps that would be more accurate. Um, look after each other and good night.